This is Vic Slain Hope, and you're tuning in to Dusty Vision TV. Just give me a little bit of peace. Steady job and some food to eat. Just give me a little bit of peace. Steady job and some Bronx is definitely in the building tonight. Really Just looking forward to chatting with this dude. I came across his channel not too long ago. And I'm going to be the first, one of the first to call it if someone hasn't called it already, this dude's going to be next up. Um, really interesting channel, and I really encourage everyone out there to subscribe to it. It's Vic Slang Hope on YouTube. Ladies and gentlemen, I have Victor. What up, man? What's good? What's good? I appreciate you having me on the show. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate the, the great content that you're, you're putting out there, man. Um, really, really a, a different type of vibe than a lot of the other, um, you know, gang-related type you know, a channels that I see out there. So I appreciate you bringing some good stuff. Yeah, definitely. You know, try to do something like different, yeah. not glorify, but like, you know, just bring awareness. Man, I, I saw a couple of videos today that I want to get into specifically, but before we do that, um, tell us what made you start your channel. So I'm a person that like, I like learning and I love educating myself and I like whether it's reading or watching documentaries, so at a point in my life, I was I started to watch a lot of like documentaries on YouTube and stuff like that. So, and then I thought about it like all the other ignorant content that existed on YouTube and like other social media platforms, right? So I was like, I started looking at like the views and stuff like that. I started looking at like how many views like some of the ignorant content gets and how many views like the educational stuff get. Oh, and it doesn't it's like night and, and day. It yeah, and it doesn't even compare. So. Mm -hmm. I thought, of, and then I just told myself, like, like I used to do, um, like public speaking engagements and I used to serve on panels at universities and so and stuff like that while, you know, before the, the virus and stuff happened. So then I told myself, like, I could start, I should start a YouTube channel. Like I could start that. talk about like, at first I wanted to talk about controversial topics that a lot of people is not really like talking about or they scared to expound on. But then I was just like, you know, I could just kind of like put my message out there on the platform and, you know, millions of people could one day perhaps see it on YouTube and it's something that will kind of like last. So that's kind of like where I was trying to go. I love that. So you made, made a positive out of a negative and you're, you know, probably like the fifth or sixth person I've talked to who has a successful, and I'm going to say successful YouTube channel because it is hard to get 10,000 subscribers and you're only growing. But for anybody out there who knows or doesn't know about YouTube, it is really hard to get 10,000 subscribers. I have 24,000 right now and it took me forever just to get to 1,000. Um, so the fact that you took a negative, the pandemic, the coronavirus and turned it into a positive, which is a successful YouTube channel, I definitely got to tip my, my hat to you, dog. No, definitely, definitely. Thank you. <laughs> Well, let's uh, let's let's take it all the way back, man. For people who don't know you, and for once again, I encourage everybody out there to YouTube Vic Slang Hope. That's V I C S L A N G H O P E for my remedial people out there. Um, where did you grow up, man? So I grew up in the Bronx. I was born and raised here all my life. I moved around a few times. You know, it was, was kind of like rough growing up. You know, in the shelter system. Um, I had. I was out in Honduras, so like my mother believed heavily on like co like culture and like family ties. So I always go to Honduras frequently. And once the last time I went, I stayed over there for like two years. So back over here, my mother was living her life like you know, like a single woman without her child around. So when I came back, she was staying in the room. But you know, when I came back, it was a different situation. Like we couldn't stay in the room. So. You know, she was trying to figure out how to get an apartment, and that was kind of, like, hard. And then, like, we ended up going into a shelter. And, yeah, so I grew up in the Bronx most of my life. I grew up, like, around, like, 174th area. I'm, um, like, like around 174th, Bryant, for those of y'all who know. This is before they built the mall over there. And I went to CS6, which is on Vice and Tremont. And then around, like, 12 years old, I kind of like moved uptown to the Bronx for the, you know, for the viewers uh, or whoever's watching it. Like I moved, I moved to uptown of the Bronx, but then I was only there for like maybe like four years and then I got incarcerated and then I, I, re I got incarcerated at 18 and then I returned home like 24 or 25. So I wasn't even out there a lot, like a long time. Like, you know, I just, but that was the first place that I, I actually could call home. Like, you know, uh, Now, to, um, 
for the layman's out there who don't really know, you know, we obviously know South Bronx, South, South Bronx. And um, yeah. I have a homie from um, from North Bronx. Uh, shout out to Preacher Bishop. Um, where, I guess, where, for lack of better word, phrase, where did you grow up in the Bronx? Like, South Side, North Side, what are we talking? Yeah, so, like, so till I, till, like, I was 12, I grew up in the South Bronx. And after 12, I moved to the Northeast Bronx, which is, like, uptown. Gotcha. Okay, cool, cool. And when was the first time, I want to get before you even jumped off the porch and all that, but when was the first time you even heard anything about Crips and Bloods, you personally? So, oh, ooh, man, you, you, you got me going in the brain. I'm, <laughs> I'm thinking, like, so I think I was young. I, I don't remember exactly when, but I know, like, before, like, um, so before, so I was into sports a lot when I was growing up. So I didn't really, you know, know about gangs and stuff like that. So like maybe to like I be, when I came back from Honduras, which is like around, I was like around 10 when I came back from Honduras. So around 10, 11. So when I came back from Honduras, um, some of my cousins, they was already banging. And for those who know, like a lot of like Honduran people, they actually were crip back then. So... They even had like they they own little situation called Honduran Mafia Crip. Mm. So, you know, a lot of Hondurians were Crip. So when I came back, I started seeing that there was a lot of like Hondurians that were Crip. And this is like the first time I actually like fully got exposed to it because I didn't grow up in a household where like, you know, we watched Snoop Dogg or we watched like mainstream media and stuff like that. And if we did, like, you know, my family was, you know, they spoke Spanish. You know, they watched novellas and mm. soap operas and all these different things. So... I didn't grow up in a household where I was exposed to that kind of like that, but I still went to school. But my first time, like really, really getting into it was like when I came back from Honduras, I was like around 10, 11. And I just became intrigued with it. And I think it was more so because people, and this is like the people I grew up around. So it, it, it almost seems like it became like a cultural thing. So okay. this is kind of like my first time, like getting in tune with it. Okay, so the first time was, you know, I learned that from your channel, too. I had no idea that there was a, you know, a big population at the beginning of um, Honduran Crips. Yeah, definitely. Um, the Bronx actually has, it's not the biggest um, Honduran community, um, like, because a lot of Honduran communities have been spread out throughout the United States and other countries, the, or the Garifuna community, because um, we are called Garifuna, um, the ones that still have that culture and speak the language. Um, predominantly the black Hondurians in, in Honduras and in, in Guatemala and Nicaragua and in different parts because we are spread out. So the Garifuna people, the Honduran folks, we at the Bronx is actually one of like the biggest communities. 